This is Swell Rally Radio on WRC.com. Welcome to the official WRC podcast for day two of the Rally of Spain. It has been a day of tarmac yesterday. Day one of the rally was on gravel, day two on tarmac, and what an interesting day we have had. My name is Colin Clark from Rally Radio, and joining me this evening, Gerard Quinn, the boss of the Ford Motorsport Project. Gerard, the reason we're in here with you this evening is that we have seen probably the most remarkable day on tarmac that young Yari Mati Latvala has ever enjoyed. Just the most incredible performance from him. You guys must be delighted. Yeah, I'm very proud for for the team and for Yari Matti as well. He had a fantastic day. The way he went out this morning, considering how he ended up yesterday, he was in the lead and he was, um, you know, finished the the end of the day after dropping back to second place after the misfortunes he had on the final stage. Dusted himself off, literally, and uh, went back out onto tarmac this morning and set some incredible times. 30-odd seconds behind Sebastian Loeb going into two days of tarmac. Most drivers would have given up. Latvala didn't. He knew that if he could set some quick times, take a bit of time out of Loeb during the course of the day, he would put pressure on Loeb for the final day. And that's exactly what he's done. He's had a quicker day on tarmac than Sebastian Loeb. His comment at the final stage when asked, what is the plan for tomorrow? He said to pressurise Loeb. He's done that. And there is still a chance that Loeb may make a mistake under pressure. Anything can happen tomorrow. So Latvala putting himself in a position to win this event still. Yeah, I think, and, and the good thing is, having spoken to Yari when he came into uh, service tonight, is he's really comfortable, he feels confident, he likes the car, um, and, and I think he's going to go out there and do that tomorrow. He was quick enough to pay tribute to the car during the course of the day. He didn't put it all down to, to himself, and that's unusual for a driver. But it's on both sides, isn't it? The car clearly is better than the focus was on tarmac, but Latvala has come on in leaps and bounds since even this time last year. Yeah, I think the good thing is that uh, Yeri's development actually in the car has been pr- progressive and this is not a flash in the pan. Um, we, we've known right from the start of the season that we've had a really good car and that's been the most frustrating thing about this season that, you know, we've had uh, flashes of, of really good fortune and um, then we've had some terrible bad luck. But, you know, when, when the guy gets into the car and when he goes out there and does what Yari did today, you know, it just goes to show you that, yes, we have a good car and we've all the reason to believe it now. Uh, we just need to get Miko into that same sort of uh, form now as uh, Yari is uh, experiencing at the moment. So at the end of the day, Sebastian Loeb still leads the rally, but a bit of pressure on him. Second place, Yari Mati Latvala. Miko Harvinen had a bit of pressure today, we thought, perhaps from Sebastian Ogier, certainly from Danny Sordo. Ogier, the threat, disappeared with a puncture that he picked up. Danny Sordo has taken quite some time out of Miko today, but Miko responded well in the final stage, and he's got quite a solid third place at the end of day two. Yeah, the important thing for Miko is, um, you know, in, in that last stage, uh, he consolidated uh, his third position, and that's really important going into tomorrow, because... Um, he, he needs to be in that third position and he needs to retain that so that he keeps his chances of winning the championship alive for when we go to, to Rally GB. And, you know, it's, it's all about winning the Drivers' Championship, but as well, we want to keep the fight open right till the last event. And who knows what might happen. A great day for Ford today. Gerard, thank you for joining us this evening. We'll see what happens tomorrow with your boys. Thanks, Colin. There we go. That's Gerard Quinn. And every uh, right to have a big, big smile on his face. Latvala showing that he can take the challenge on tarmac to the Citroëns, to take the challenge to the Supremo on Citroën. That is Sebastian Loeb. Uh, let's get hold of Julian Porter, the rally guru. He's just finishing off his dinner here in the Ford hospitality area. Josie, we were just talking with Gerard there about the day that Ford have had, in particular the day that Yai Mati Latvala said. What about tomorrow? 27, 28 seconds behind going into tomorrow really a tough ask for him to put any more pressure on Sebastian Loeb but he's right there he's right there uh, I mean <clears throat> it's it's a stall it's a spin and turning it around you know what I mean and there's no guarantees let's say Sebastian does lose 30-35 seconds Yari's proved today that you can uh, he can hold it on. So Loeb is under, uh, not mega pressure, but he's under pressure. Oh, hang on, but look who's just joined us. Well, listen, no, well, we'll speak to this man in a second, Jules, but let's just talk about, you know, the championship challenge. Sebastian Ogier, the most disappointed man out there today, he was, I think, hoping to challenge for third place. He was hoping to push Miko Harvin today, picking up a puncture in the first long stage of the day. Massively deflated come the end of the day, really just wanted to go home. I like that. Massively deflated at a puncture. That's good. That's good. That's because I've got brains, Jules. It's a clever, clever use of words. That's university education. Pays off. Is that what it is? Well, well, I mean, 
I don't think Olivier will be too happy when your, your number two driver turns around at four stages out of six and says, I have no motivation to continue. I can't wait to go home. It's a strange thing to say because he is still very much in the title race, isn't he? And, and we know how difficult GB is. Listen, we might get snow and ice in GB, and if you get snow and ice, anything can happen out there. Strange thing for Ogier to say, but Ogier gives me the impression he's a very ruthless sort of character, and all he is interested in doing is winning. If he ain't winning, he ain't interested. I would say that every single one of these factory supported or factory drivers, all they're interested in is winning. That's all they want to do. That's what they've done in their national careers, their, their earlier careers. But you get certain cars and certain teams with certain budgets who you know you can win. And Oji is in there. He was told before he even arrived he was to aid Loeb. I don't know whether it's... It's frustrating for him, obviously, two punctures. But what that has done, in my opinion, is that has took off um, the pressure... <laughs> of him not basically having to, like, slow down for Loeb, you know what I mean? So he's kind of not had that frustration of having to slow down for Loeb, but he wants to be there in case something happens to Loeb. Yeah, well, he does. A, a difficult day, for sure, for Sebastian Ogier. Danny Sordo had a decent day. He finishes the day in fourth, putting pressure on potentially Miko Harvenen tomorrow, but a good response from Harvenen in the last stage of the day to extend the gap between himself and Danny Sordo. But Sordo and Mini, another good day. A good day as well for Chris Meek. He showed some real pace this afternoon. He did. I mean, Sordo was actually uh, really gobsmacked by Harvenen taking five back in the last stage. He was kind of on the charge, on the charge, and all of a sudden, so, uh, Sordo loses five in the last stage when he thought he was going to be heading in the right direction. But I, I think Miko now, psychologically, at the end of the day, Miko probably will go into tomorrow morning on a higher than uh, Sordo. I, I, and he needs to because if he doesn't, the championship switch can't happen. Exactly. Well, it could happen, but it would be very silly to do that. Uh, thanks for that, Josie. We'll come back to you in a second. The man sitting with us at the dinner table here in the Ford hospitality area, what a splendid hospitality area it is as well, is Chris Atkinson. Chris Atkinson, always good to see you around the service park. Clearly, we'd rather see you in racing overalls. But you're here, I believe you're with the Ken Block team, getting experience at these stages again. Yeah, no, it's good. It's, um, Ken's, Ken's doing a good job, having a bit of fun out there. It's uh, tricky conditions, I think everyone's finding it, but this, the, the last stage was really nice. I'd like to have been racing on that. That was a cool stage. Ken's having fun out with the fans right now. They love him here, so it's cool. Talk is that we might well see you on quite a number of rallies next year in the World Rally Car. Anything more you can tell us about that? Are you, is that your talk, or, or who's talking yeah. it up? Just me. I'm always talking you up, Chris Atkinson. You know that. I, I love it. You make me feel good. <laughs> you should have him as your manager, shouldn't you? You're, you're yeah, PR. I, I'm, already, I'm already racing if, I, if he was my manager. <laughs> so, Chris, uh, we're really hoping to see you back next year. You're showing in the APRC this year that you're a man that can still drive very, very quickly indeed. And let's face it, a car that is difficult to drive uh, in with a chance of winning that one. It's going to be an interesting last round of the APRC. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're obviously a bit frustrated in... Um, in Japan the other week, we had a minute lead, would have won the championship and uh, had a small problem. Um, so uh, we didn't continue running, which was frustrating. And, and uh, so Alistair actually has the, the championship lead now, so we've got to go full gas last round, try and beat him. Yeah, well, the best of luck with that, Chris. Uh, we will see you, hopefully, in racing suits in the World Rally Championship very soon indeed. I hope so. Yeah, so do we. That's Chris Atkinson. But, Josie, back to you uh, just to round up the podcast. Jules, give us the top five going into the last day of Rally Catalonia and tell us, once you've finished playing with your telephone, what you think is going to happen tomorrow. Right, I'll give you the top five first. That's Loeb, Latvala, Hervenen. That lead between Loeb and Latvala is 27.6. Seb thinking that tonight in that final stage, saying to us, I think I've got the same, near of the same lead as what I came into the day. Actually, a little bit less. Latvala was quicker than him yeah, through the course yeah. of the day. Over the day, over the course of this day, if there was points awarded for today, Latvala would have taken maximum points. Irvin in third, Sordo fourth, Ogier fifth. As you say, Chris Meek rounding out that top six. What I think is going to happen tomorrow is I, I think Loeb will win is it, is he seventh or eighth. Spain or something in a row as well. I think he will win that. I think Biko Hovenen will finish second. And Yari Mati will finish third. I, I, I'm hoping that happens because OJ is still going to get points towards the championship. He's not going to be out of it. But if uh, Hovenen was to drop to fourth or, or something or stay in third and things like that, just makes that gap just a little bit more. We still have a chance of a big fight going into GB. Uh, unfortunately for Yari, the driver of his day today, uh, that's going to be his reward to take home at the end of the weekend. He's going to be the, the memory of today and 
that feeling that he had. And he loved that feeling. Oh, he did love that feeling.